Hi guys, so today I'm going to do another video in my plus size writers video series of theme parks. How as a plus size writer, you may fit in rides at theme parks. And today I'm going to discuss Canada's Wonderland in Vaughan, Ontario, Canada. Um, it's a Cedar Fair park and I've done um, Kings Island and Cedar Point so far at Cedar Fair of the Cedar Fair parks. I have been to a few more and I will at some point be doing those parks as well. And uh, Six Flags Parks and numerous other parks that I've been to. I'll be doing a plus size rider series on those as well. However, if you have a specific park you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments down below and I will try to cover that park if I have been to that park. Um, so if I haven't been to that park, I don't really feel comfortable covering it, even if I do may know how some of the rides fit. Um, but I've been to a lot of parks, and I can give some good insight on a lot of parks. I've done also Holiday World, Kennywood, uh, Kentucky Kingdom, Disney World as well, and you can find them on my channel. And there's also a Plus Size Riders playlist that will show all the videos I have done. In case you want to check it out, I really do appreciate it. So, um, the last time I was at Canada's Wonderland would have been, I think, 2018. So, um, you know, they've added Yukon Striker since then, but I do know the restraint type, so I can talk about it. Um, at the time I went to Canada's Wonderland, I would have been about 290 pounds I do believe and a US size 22 women's and I do carry most of my weight in my stomach and my thighs and hips are relatively wide. Um, I don't have a big butt and I do not have a big chest area. So just kind of give you some examples about my body type relative to how what yours is or how you may fit in these rides as well. And I'm five foot six, so just kind of middle of the road in height as well. And um, I will not be covering the water park in this video, but I will be covering all of the main part, every single ride. I'll be going in depth over. Um, and just telling you how I fit and how you as a plus size rider may fit as well. Um, so I definitely appreciate you watching this video and I hope you do find it useful. Starting out, this is we're going to talk about Behemoth and Leviathan. They are two B&M coasters, a Hyper and a Yaya, and they have what's called these clamshell restraints, as you can see here in this picture. And there is a test seat out front of both of these rides, so please do not be scared. Use the test seat; like it'll save you from having to do a walk of shame if you don't fit. And plus, it um, just helps out. Plus, you can take your time testing it out too. Um, these I fit in, but barely, and, um, I can get two, you have to get three clicks down to ride. I can get two on my own. The third one an attendant always has to help me with, push down the third one, and then by the time they do get the third click down, I'm, like, smushed. It, like, lands kind of, like, the bottom of the restraint kind of presses into my thigh, so just letting you know about that. Um, so that's my problem here is this restraint actually kind of presses more into my thighs um, and kind of my lower belly. And with my big thighs, I I, mean, I barely fit. It's it's uncomfortable, but I do ride it because they are very good rides. Um, but I know for a fact do these seat designs, if you have, you know, big thighs or big hips or big butts, you may have trouble with it. And um, it may be uncomfortable for you to ride or hard for you to ride. Uh, so just letting you know that um, big chest won't be a problem here. Just I know these aren't very fat friendly to people. Um, so definitely if you're unsure about fitting, check out the test seat out front first. This is Yukon Striker, the newest coaster at Canada's Wonderland, and unfortunately I have not 
I had a chance to write it yet, but I do know this restraint type and how these restraints work. Okay, so there is a test seat located out front on this ride. And these are what's called the B&M Vest Restraints. These are on Gatekeeper Cedar Point, Val Raven, Thunderbird Holiday World, Banshee Kings Island. Um, so basically, they're over-the-shoulder restraints. And they have a both a black and a red buckle, as you can see here. Uh, the red ones are slightly longer. They call them the big boy seats. Um, so if you are bigger, the red buckle is a little bit longer. But that may be just the difference you need to fit. Um, these V&M restraints I can fit. I have to have somebody buckle and push it down. Um, and it's kind of snug, but I do fit. So um, that's a good thing. And basically, it just has to buckle. And as long as it buckles, it's gonna you're going to be good to go. Um, it hits on my stomach. That's my issue here. So if you do have a big stomach or definitely a big chest area, you could possibly have problems with this ride. Um, hips, the seats, I mean, they're kind of narrow, but... As long as you don't have a big chest or stomach area, you should be fine. It's really, um, as I said, for me, it's my stomach and I fit, but barely. So, at my dimensions, but I do know if you have a bigger chest area, big gut, you're going to have trouble with this ride as well. Next, we'll talk about the three wooden roller coasters at the park. The Mighty Canadian Mine Buster, Wild Beast, and the Ghoster Coaster. These all use a very similar restraint system for trains from PTC. And you will find this restraint system in these trains at almost every park around. Um, Blue Streak Cedar Point, the Wooden Coasters at Holiday World, um, Kings Island's Beast. Pretty much, you know, most wooden roller coasters probably have these type of restraints. With the lap bar and the seatbelt, the seatbelt's always really long, so the seatbelt's never an issue. Um, the lap bar, it does vary by park. I'm not sure how many, but certain parks require you to only have one click. Certain parks, it's two. Certain parks, it's four, um, even. But basically, it goes over your lap, and... There's usually a seat divider in between the seats. So if you do have big hips, a big butt, you may feel squished or can't sit down all the way. Um, and if you do have a really big gut, you may not be able to fit and close the lap bar. Um, I'm fine on these rides, personally. Um, but obviously, if you do have a big stomach, you may not be or big hips. But I do know um, if you do request to sit in a row by yourself, it may give you that little extra room you need. And instead of being sat right next to somebody, uh, that can make the difference. Um, but usually in these trains, you're looking at about 15 inches of room in person. Um, it is squishy. But if you can, but if you can make yourself do it, or you can make yourself fit, um, then you should be fine to go. This is Vortex, and I'm happy to tell you this is a very big person friendly ride for plus size riders. Um, it does have an over the shoulder restraint, however, it's like I call it rationing, so it just locks to your level of comfort. Um, it's very roomy, even if you're worried about room, you can ask to sit in the car by yourself. Um, but there's literally so much room on this ride, like. Um, even if you do have a big chest, you should not have any problems. Big stomach shouldn't have any problems either. Um, this is one coaster that is definitely very plus size people friendly. This is Backlot Stunt Coaster. And um, this ride is pretty restrictive. It's not a great ride for big people to ride. Um, for one, there's a maximum weight limit of 300 pounds per rider. And for two, these cars are really narrow and small. Um, there is a seat belt, but there's a lap bar, and the lap bar has to come down, like, so far. I can't fit, personally. 
that 300 pound weight requirement, take it with a grain of salt. I think, honestly, that's where they think people won't fit at pass. Personally, I think it's more like 275, if I were to guess. Um, if you are any sort of bigger in your thighs, hips, especially your stomach, you're going to have trouble fitting in this ride. You can try to ride single if you do have big hips, but not a big stomach, and you probably will be fine. Um, but this is just a really restrictive ride, unfortunately. Uh, it's just really not accommodating for bigger people. Next, I'm going to talk about Flight Deck and Silver Streak. The restraint system is pretty much the same. Um, these are Vacoma Coasters over the shoulder restraint with a seatbelt that will come up and buckle. However, unlike Yukon Striker, this has a lot more give. It's a lot more roomier for big people. Um, I don't really have a problem on this ride with my hips at all or my thighs. And the over-the-shoulder restraint, um, a lot of times I have problems buckling it myself just because half the time I can't see it <laughs> because these restraints are bulky, basically, to put it nicely. Um, but I fit just fine, and I think it only has to come like one click, which ain't a lot to get. Um, if you do have an exceptionally large chest and stomach, I could see you not fitting. Um, I fit fine. I know this is definitely more, these are definitely more accommodating for bigger riders. Um, and, and I would, I would definitely give them a shot because again, they, they are definitely pretty accommodating. This is Time Warp, and this ride is weird um, because of how the restraints are. You kind of like, you're going to end up being like laying face down on your stomach for most of the ride. We have to climb up in the restraints like this to load, and then like it comes down on your back. There is some padding on the back of the restraints, but for the most, but there's like metal too. So it can be a very, very uncomfortable ride to begin with. Um, and if you are bigger, um, this one pad in particular, which prevents me from riding, it comes down right on your butt. And depending on your height, it hits me right on my butt. But for most people on your butt. So it's a very tight squeeze for bigger people to be able to ride this. Um, so the door has to come closed on you. And it, it's kind of claustrophobia inducing too for me because just how the restraints are but personally um I would say maybe if you have any sort of larger butt or are bigger you may have trouble with this ride as I said I don't fit in it myself at um the current dimensions I have um if you want to give it a shot you can but if you're anywhere near my size I really really don't think you're going to fit on this one though all right, continuing on to a couple more coasters here. We have the Fly, which is a wild mouse coaster, and Thunder Run, which is a mine train. These are both really accommodating if you're a larger person. Um, it's a shared lap bar. And on Thunder Run, it's a shared seat belt for the riders in the individual seat. On the Fly, you have your own individual seat belt. And I feel like the seats on Thunder Run can be a little bit narrow. So for comfort, you can always ask to sit by yourself. Plus, if you have concerns about the seat belt fitting around a couple um, larger riders or you and another person, that's also a good option. Um, I found the seat belts to be of great length on both of these rides. However, um, Thunder Run it is probably a little more comfortable if you did want to sit by yourself. And you can even do that with the fly as well if you want. This is Wonder Mountain's Guardian. It's like a combination coaster dark ride. Um, it has a lap bar restraint. It just comes down to your level of comfort. I didn't have a problem fitting on this ride. And I found it to be pretty comfortable. So um, I think this ride's relatively accommodating for plus size riders if you would want to give this ride a shot. Last coaster is Taxi Jam, and this is a coaster you can only ride if you're riding with a child. If you are 60 inches or taller, you have to have a child with you. Um, 
every time I've ever been by, went by this ride, I see adults on it sometimes, but usually they're, you know, average skinny sized adults, never seen a bigger person on this ride. And I've never rode this ride because I do not have any kids. Um, but basically, um, it's going to be narrow seats. It's just going to be smaller. If you're a smaller, bigger person and you want to ride with your kid, you might be okay. Um, but if you are, you know, my size, probably won't fit on this ride just because it is, you know, a kitty coaster. Um, but now we're going to move on to some thrill rides. This is the Drop Tower ride. This ride has an over-the-shoulder harness and a seatbelt that comes up between your legs to attach to the harness. I personally don't even really come close to fitting in this ride. Um, for some reason, I always have trouble fitting in these intimate drop towers. I think um, I was down to 240, I think, maybe I could fit in it. Um... If you ever do have a big chest, a bigger stomach, you, you may have difficulty fitting in this ride. And also, per cabin, has a weight limit of 800 pounds as well. But um, there is no test seat for this ride. So, um, if you do have trouble with, say, other over-the-shoulder restraints, this one's definitely one of the most restraining ones that's hard to fit in if you're a bigger person. These next rides are some thrilling flat, flat rides, and I'm going to talk about all of them together. They are Lumberjack, Cyclone, Riptide, Shockwave, Skyhawk, Sledgehammer, and Soaring Timbers. These rides all have one thing in common, the restraint. They are all over-the-shoulder restraints with a seatbelt that comes up between your legs and attaches to the restraint. Um, if you do have a bigger stomach, big chest, you may have issues with this ride, these rides. And I've noticed with these rides, even though they're all the same restraint type, I, each one, you kind of feel a little bit different. Um, there are test seats outside of Lumberjack and Skyhawk. So definitely use those if you're going to ride one of those rides. Um, for a fact, with these rides, I do fit on Cyclone for a fact. And it is the Giants Pendulum one. I do fit on it. I have to have somebody push down and help me. But I do fit on it. Um, Sledgehammer, every time I've tried, uh, it's been a no-go. I think I'm probably within 10 or 20 pounds of fitting on Sledgehammer. And another thing to note about these rides is that some of the seats are more wider than others. Like Riptide, I think the seats are really narrow to me. Um, so again, each one's a little different. But personally, um, I've been able to ride all of them except, as I said, the sledgehammer one, um, some of them I have to have people push on me. Some of them it's close, like Lumberjack, Shockwave, Soaring Timbers. It's really close on me, um, unfortunately. But one thing I will tell you, this one here is Skyhawk. This one is definitely the most accommodating of them. And I actually don't even have any problems on this one. There is a test seat out front on this one, too, just to check. Um, I like this picture because, as you can see in this picture, you can see this person who's definitely average slim build but you see the orange belt and you see all the room that that can come out and still fasten so just to kind of give you a perspective of how much room that you would have still to get that belt to fit and in the back here I think that's a kid back there you can see too plenty of room still on that belt and plus you're in your own little um seat so nobody's ever going to be next to you so you don't have to worry about like kind of scrunching in, which is really nice. Um, so this one I would say is definitely the most accommodating one out of all of them. And I would say the sledgehammer is probably the least accommodating. Um, however, if you do try out the test seats on the rides that do have them, um, which is the Lumberjack and Skyhawk, um, 
If you can fit Lumberjack, you probably will fit all of them. Maybe you have trouble on Sledgehammer. But Skyhawk, I feel like, is going to be one that you probably have a good chance of being able to fit. But I would definitely still check out the test seat just in case on that one. This right here is Wild Nightmares. And it is like a stand-up ride. Um, I call them like the Revolution type stand-up rides. I'm sure you've seen them before. However, this one's definitely a little unique from the other ones. And it is unique in the fact that instead of having an individual safety chain, you actually, um, there's individual little like ride units you're going to stand in, as you can see here in the picture. And a safety chain like actually goes over the individual unit instead of over individual rider. So you will actually have plenty of room and you will have no trouble at all fitting on this ride. This here is the Wind Seeker, which you may have seen in other Cedar Fair parks. They're super common. Um, for some reason, I always have trouble fitting in these. If you are bigger on your stomach, bottom, hips, thighs, you may also have trouble. Um, they just have a weight limit of like 300 pounds a person. Um, so if you're over the weight limit, obviously you can't ride. Um, but even being under the weight limit, I still can't fit. I know other people have been like, I've heard be like 250, but if they're big on the bottom, they have trouble fitting too. Um, so just kind of a warning, if you are bigger on the bottom, you may also have trouble fitting on this ride. Now we're going to move on and talk about some more family-oriented rides. This is called Swing of the Century, which... The problem with this ride is it has a weight limit of 230 pounds per rider. So I definitely can't ride. But I know for a fact I could fit in the seats. I don't see the seats being an issue. However, the 230 pound weight limit is going to prevent me from being able to ride. It may prevent you as well, unfortunately. This is Whitewater Canyon, which I definitely feel like pretty much everybody will be able to ride. There is a seat belt. And the thing about this seatbelt is you can see here in the picture how there's seats in two and then a space and seats in two, then a space, you know. And the seatbelt actually comes across both seats. Um, in my personal experience, uh, the seatbelt is definitely long enough for me. I feel like, you know, it's definitely long enough for you most likely. However, if you want to sit directly beside somebody, a seatbelt may actually not be long enough. So I'd actually recommend not even sitting beside anybody um, just because of the length of that seatbelt. Um, they've had no problem accommodating me when I've asked for that. Um, so just let you know about that. These next few rides I'm going to talk about are also, I feel, that are very accommodating for pretty much everybody. The rides may have like a lap bar restraint. They may have a seat belt restraint. Um, if you feel like you and the person you're with or the people you're with can't fit in the same car together or same row or however, you can always ask to sit by yourself just in case you're worried and you should definitely be fine. Um, these rides, I feel, unless you have like an exceptionally large stomach, um, you should be able to ride just fine. I have a big stomach and I'm fine. These rides are the Antique Carousel, the Flying Canoes, Clockworks, the Kraken Wagon, the Spinnovator, Timberwolf Falls, and Vikings Rage. This right here is called Flying Eagles and it does have a maximum weight limit per eagle of 340 pounds a rider, or I'm sorry, 340 pounds per eagle total. Um, the seatbelt, I feel like it's really long, um, but like two adults definitely are going to be cramped in here. Um, as a plus size rider, you could probably fit with a small child. That would be fine, um, but just be mindful of that 340 pound weight limit total. This is Boo Blasters on Boo Hill, which is really accommodating for pretty much everybody. Everybody can ride this. There is a lap bar that comes down for all riders. However, it just comes down to your level of comfort. The only thing is there is a maximum weight limit of 970 pounds per car, which you can, um, you know, just split up your party if you need to. 
next two rides, everybody should be able to ride. No issues. They do have seat belts, however. Um, you should, still should be fine to ride. They are Jokey's Jalopies, which is this antique car ride. And the other ride that is fine to ride is going to be the Swan Lake ride. The following rides and attractions are in the children's area of Canada's Wonderland. And I'm going to start out, I'm going to name all of these attractions in this section I'm talking about. Um, and if I don't, and then I'll go back and individually talk about some of the attractions and special restrictions. If I don't go back and individually talk about a specific attraction, it is because it's either A, does not have a designated weight limit, or B, um, the restraint type may just be a standard seat with a seat belt, but just with any of these rides. They are in the children's section. They are designed for kids. So as a bigger person, you definitely are probably going to have some difficulty with a lot of these rides. Some of them, maybe not so much. Um, and if you want, you can always just sit back and watch the kids. And for any of these rides, you must have a kid with you to actually ride the ride. And these particular rides are going to be the Beagle Brigade Airfield, Blast Off, the Character Carousel, the Kidsville Station, Jumpin' Jet, Lucy's Tugboat, Maple Park Treehouse, the Peanuts 500, Sally's Love Buggies, Snoopy's Revolution, Sugar Shack, the Pumpkin Patch, Treetop Adventure, and the Woodstock Whirly Birds. Beetle Brigade Airfield has a weight limit of 386 pounds per unit, which is a ride vehicle, and it looks like it would be a very, very tight ride for um, almost any adult, honestly, to me. And then we have Blast Off, which is like a mini, uh, like, drop tower type ride, and it says that... 700 pounds total on the ride unit and one adult per ride cycle. Um, and this actually has a shared lap bar that comes down on you and all the kids. So unless you're like a really skinny adult, this ride's just unfortunately not going to work for you. Um, and then we have the character carousel. You must ride in a little chariot and the chariot has a weight limit of 680 pounds. And then the Jumpin' Jet has a 440-pound max weight limit with the one adult per row. And it's not that the whole ride has the weight limit. It's just the row. Um, the doors to get in the Jumpin' Jet are, like, really, really narrow and small. Um, but once you're in the Jumpin' Jet, you should be fine. It's just the doors are really narrow and then also the weight limit. And Lucy's Tugboat, they... <laughs> Make you have one adult max per row. And it looks to me that, like, I mean, you wouldn't have a problem at all as a big person fitting. Um, just remember just one adult max per row, though, on the Lucy's tugboat. And then the Peanuts 500, it's really, really small. And it's a really tight fit. Um, and it's 275 pounds max per ride. I don't recommend it for a big person. Um, and then we have Snoopy's Revolution, which is like the little mini parcel ride that they do have there. And it has a weight limit of 830 pounds in the car. And honestly, you should fit just fine in the ride. It's just um, that weight limit there. Sugar Shack max maximum is one adult per unit. However, you shouldn't have an issue riding this ride. Um, pumpkin Patch maximum weight 660 pounds. I know the ride shouldn't really have an issue with. Um, Treetop Adventure is 462 pounds total maximum. And this ride is pretty like. Just the design of the ride vehicle is a snug. I've heard that the seatbelt also on this ride is short, um, but I'm not 100% sure how short the seatbelt is. But I've, I've heard it is, though. And then the Woodstock Whirly Birds 
is a maximum weight of 440 pounds and with a seat belt as well. I don't think you'll have too much of an issue fitting in the ride. It's just that there is, you know, that weight limit in effect. The following rides and attractions, us bigger people are not going to be able to ride. And it's not because of any weight limits or our sides won't fit. It's because of height restrictions. Um, all of these rides either have a 60 inch max or 54 inch max height requirement. And even if you may be under 60 inches, um, they're just for kids. And they are Joe Cool's Dodgem School, Frequent Flyers, Swing Time, Snoopy vs. Red Baron, and Snoopy's Space Race. This concludes the Canada's Wonderland Plus Size Guide for Riders video today. And I hope that you have found this video useful. Hopefully um, helped ease some of the fears you may have thinking it's a plus size rider. There's no point in going or being concerned about rides. Because I definitely think you're going to still have a great time. Um, and I think you're going to be able to ride quite a bit of stuff. Um, and again, just some final tips. Definitely, if there's a test seat, use it. Don't be scared to use it. I'd rather people watch me in a test seat than get all the way, all the way in the line and get up to the ride and not fit. Um, and if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like this video and subscribe if you have not already and check out my other plus size rider videos or my other numerous videos on the channel. And if you do have any, any additional questions whatsoever, comment them down below or I do actually have an email as well that will be in the description if you'd rather email your question. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer it for you. Um, the only rides I did not cover in this video were the paid attractions because I've never done them. Um, so I didn't want to, you know, really talk about the paid attractions that you have to pay extra for once you're here. Um, but I should have covered everything except, of course, the water park. I did not do the water park. Um, but again, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.